Oh, I just realized that uh, this whole time I'm. Oh my gosh. I guess most of the stream we've been or you know up until up until this point we have been uh, muted and I didn't realize that guys and it's probably because of my kids or something like that um, so yeah uh, I guess I gotta cover all of that again uh, everything that we've done anyway what I was talking about was my um, I'm not happy with GW so like I said, if and I'm pretty sure it was muted at the time, I'm a I'm, I'm a member of the Mini Wargaming guys. They're Vault, right? Now I'm not affiliated with them in any way. They don't, uh, you know, I'm not sponsored by them or nothing. They probably don't even know I exist, other than the fact that I just, you know, have a reoccurring payment, you know, for the Vault. And like I said before, in truth, I don't even really, I don't even watch the videos half the time. So they're basically just getting the money because I want to support the hobby and support people. And if there's something you know I'm curious about, I can go and check them out. None of the channels out there, none of them, I don't care who it is, always get it right. Tactical Tortoise, freaking Mini Wargaming, whoever. Everybody gets rules wrong or whatever. But they are one of the ones that I have found that are the most consistent and have been over the years that I've been a vault member. Um, you won't find me under Angry Badger Minis. Um, because I did it a long time ago. Um, but anyway, uh, I think it's under Wounded Badger or something like that. Um, what was I going to say? Anyway, what I'm upset about or you know annoyed with is Games Workshop in general, and we usually are. Um, but I'm, I'm happy about the fact that Mini Wargaming, Dave, I think, and Matt are launching this... Um, Gosh, what do you call it? The uh, Veil Touched Ravage Stars campaign thing with these models. And these models are amazing. Um, I hope to get into it someday. I do not have the ability at the moment to jump on the campaign, you know, buy the package deals and all that stuff, which I really wanted to, but, you know, life priorities and things like that. But it's a really, it looks really good to me. Um, I'm hoping, since I'm going to do my part, since if you guys know who Baltimore is, they did a small video storyline thing, which was pretty cool. I mean, you're going in one direction, and then you realize, you know, they're actually talking about Matt and Dave, but it's still, it's still cool, um, the way they, they did the fiction on that. Um, and what I was going to say was um, they need to come up with rules for a game. Now, I know there's things out there like one page rules and stuff like that and you know I'm I'm actually I've actually got all that stuff printed off and I you know I'm checking it out myself. Um, and we'll see how it rolls, but uh, yeah, I'm just I'm just kind of disillusioned with the whole GW thing and now there's there's all this craziness going on. I'm going to call it lack of balance. Um, I mean, it's gotten really stupid. And it's all about you know selling models. Um, now I'm, you guys know I have a Tau army that took me forever to put together, uh, including when I started doing it here on the channel because I just I'm not that into Tau. Um, well, and because GW stole my rules back in the day uh, for Ford Observers and put it on their marker light stuff. But um, and if you know I can talk about that some other video again. I, but I did it in a different uh, video towards the beginning of my channel. Um, this was back in uh, the uh, late 90s and um, anyway so yeah you know a little little uh, annoyed by what's going on I mean take a look at for instance the um, you know the railgun thing okay I'm not I'm not a like I'm not the guy that's gonna be like if you show up with something like that that's, you know that you're gonna you know you set it on the table and be like oh screw this and pick my miles up and go home I would never do that you know I can have fun in my own mind regardless of what's going on and have the story painted out of my mind like I'm watching a movie regardless if I win or lose. Um, 
But what I do have a problem with is the fact that I believe the storm surge was not selling like they wanted it to. And I believe they do this. I mean, you know, and if you guys disagree with me, by all means, let me know why. Or, you know, show me where I'm wrong or misguided. Um, but uh, I don't. I believe they do this when they're not selling enough of the model that they want to sell. And, you know, keep in mind, for those of you that don't know, it's not like it costs GW a ton of money to make these things, okay? I mean, not even remotely close. I mean, we're probably paying you know easily 50 to 60 percent if not more above what it costs them okay um probably more but uh anyway so going back to the storm surge thing like i said in this uh or, i'm sorry not the storm surge. what the heck am i talking about i'm talking about rail guns right now but even the storm surge um the fact that uh you know here you have these weapons, you know, the, these mechs and stuff like that. And then you come out with this deal where, with the railgun, I, I believe it's a railgun, where you can get 12 damage, you know, in one, one volley of shooting. I realize you still have to hit, blah, blah, blah. But here you have somebody, you know, that, you know, you get a guy, for instance, new to the hobby, and he like, you know, he sees an Imperial Knight, for instance. What do they run, like $150 US, something like that? Um, I don't even remember anymore. I bought mine so long ago. I think I got them for 110 back then. Um, and I probably got them from like Neil at the war store. If you guys remember him and stuff. Um, so I got a little bit of discount. Uh, anyway, you get, um, you get the, you know, a kid new in the, you know, new in the hobby buys a freaking Imperial Knight, for instance, you know, 150 bucks, you know, whether it's his pocket, his parents' pocket, convincing them, whatever, good grades, blah, blah, blah. I'm trying to really waffle here, as uh, some people say. And um, he throws it on the table, and now it's gone first turn. He spent all this money, all this time assembling it. For those of you that have Imperial Knights, you know that they're, you know, can be somewhat of a pain to assemble, especially if you're doing a lot of magnetizing and things like that. You know, and it's gone. One turn. Just gone. What was the point? You know what I'm saying? Now, GW's not going to care because they have their money. You know what I mean? I mean, they don't even know that this has happened, you know, or whatever. The, the point is, supposedly, this stuff, you know, they're playtesting things. There's no way that you could have missed that. I mean, we don't even have to play the game and know what's going to happen. There's enough of us, you know, or enough of you, rather, that you can just look at the numbers and immediately go, well, that's retarded you know i mean that's gonna kill and, and it's gonna do exactly what i just got through describing well you know i don't want to say it is what it is but this kind of stuff is annoying and there was at one point in time where i was relatively sympathetic to the whole you know gwip thing you know against recasters and you know whatever um, of course we didn't have very many options and of course i am heavily invested you know plastic wise in the GW um, I mean I'm, I don't have any investments with them uh, they've all in my opinion they've always been way too freaking expensive for that as well but um, you know now we're starting to get options like I said like this Ravage Star thing um, and, and the models look amazing but you know and I know that Games Workshop is gonna do everything that they can to try to go after these guys and try to say you know something stupid like oh well you know you you copied our Chaos Marines or whatever. The Chaos Star, you know, whatever. No, the Chaos Star is not yours, okay? It's been around long before GW was ever a thing. Hell, GW, you know, trying to, of all things, copyright the, the, the you know, the word Space Marine. Copyright the word Warhammer. You know, all these stupid things. And, and we all know, especially as veteran guys, you know, that have been around. We all know how much GW's ripped things off. I mean, look at this new Adeptus Titanicus freaking uh, Warhound that they put out. It's literally an Ed, uh, Ed 209 Robocop, you know, first Robocop um, knockoff. The only difference is it's got a freaking cannon on top and it looks like a damn chicken. I mean, it does. I mean, I, I, I waited, as for those of you that have been around the channel, you know this, but I waited 20 years for a new Adeptus Titanicus game to come out. I bought two of the Grandmaster sets. I think that's what it is. 
um, bought a ton of other Titans and Knights and blah 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 city stuff you know all this stuff I got to put together and you know super happy and I mean dude there's not you just threw this together that's all you did you just threw it together it looks like crap and that's the kind of stuff right there you know in some cases now I mean there's guys that they're just playing to win and they're gonna be like oh man you know here's a scout titan with a freaking you know volcano cannon or whatever the hell it is on top of his on top of his carapace you know and they're gonna be all about that they don't care about the look of it they don't care about the you know the the theme you know the um, the lore none of that stuff and that's fine that's it's their game you know they play it the way they want to but you've got you know you're building or making these things that are just stupid you know I mean it's just stupid heck if anything you should have made some other you know arm type guns or you know something else you know maybe redone the armor or something I mean some of the Titans in the Adeptus Titanicus you know things uh, I'm sorry in this the series look absolutely stupid never even heard of them before until Adeptus Titanicus came out um, I'm trying to remember the one it just looks like a giant fat piece of plastic standing there like there's no feasible way that, that thing could possibly move but I can't remember the name of it so Anyway, um, and now I sound like I'm just complaining, but I mean, it's GW. So, where am I going with all this? If you, <clears throat> if you have options, especially now, and I don't want GW to die. I got nothing, I mean, I got, I got no reason for them, you know, for me to want that to happen. You know, because, if, you know, if they go down, there's not a lot for us left. This is why over the years, even though I, you know, haven't played a game in years, this is why I have every book that I have ever bought. I've never gotten rid of anything. I've never sold it on eBay. Nothing like that. Because I wanted to be able to reference things. That, you know, there's good lore that you don't read anymore or you can't get anymore. Um, you know, before the whole Matt Ward nonsense. Um especially Necrons. Necrons were so much better before. I mean, they're, now they're stupid. The lore is stupid, in my opinion. Um, there's no mystery anymore. Now it's, you know, they're basically just human beings in metal skin. Um, and I didn't like that. Um, and I mean, you could say that, well, they always look like that. I'm not talking about the look. I'm talking about, you know, the fact that, you know, now we've got these, uh, you know, we'll call them emperors if you will or dynasty leaders <clears throat> excuse me dynasty leaders of, of you know these necron you know dynasties and so you know we're making deals with them and all this other nonsense I mean it's, it's absolutely ridiculous they used to just be cold-hearted killers didn't care you know there was no reasoning with them you know of course you know where did that get stolen from the Terminator <clears throat> excuse me um, this is <clears throat> excuse me <clears throat> this is exactly <clears throat> man we're having some <clears throat> serious weather changes here and um, where I live <clears throat> I never had allergies until we moved here <clears throat> and depending on you know what's going on outside you know <laughs> I can end up doing that whole thing clearing my throat for a while so I apologize um, we're gonna have to trim some of this one off on this side um, but yeah it's just you know it's ridiculous uh, I got totally sidetracked of what I was gonna say um, but yeah and I mean we look at you know things that GW is you know uh, skimmed off you know other other IPs or other you know ideas and things like that and I'm not trying to get in the whole you know who was here first the chicken or the egg between Warcraft Starcraft and Warhammer and stuff I mean it's simple just look at the dates it's no big deal but if you look at GW you know everything from I mean take a look at the old Hormigons for instance and Tyranids they look almost exactly like the aliens from Alien okay um, <clears throat> and you know it's it's what it is so uh, I mean this is this is what our entire culture in the hobby was 
you know, um, you know, was founded on. I mean, it's what we knew. It's you know the the artwork, the ability to um, you know to even make or put this stuff in miniature form. You know, the technology involved, whatever. Um, you know, all of that stuff matters. Now, it may not matter to folks, you know, and I'm not trying to be offensive here, but it may not matter to some of you younger guys because <clears throat> you weren't there, you know, at the time. You weren't even on this earth poss possibly when, you know, all of these things, you know, were coming about. <clears throat> and this is not an old dog, you guys suck, you know, you don't know, blah, blah. <clears throat> Veteran rant. It's, <clears throat> there's... You know, I'm happy that the model, I mean the models, yeah, the models and the hobby have come to the point that they are, um, especially, you know, for you guys, because, you know, as we move in technology and people enjoy art in different forms and things like that, it'll draw more people into the hobby. What I'm not for, though, is power gaming. <clears throat> it's just not my thing. If it's your thing, awesome. Um, that being said... We, you know, you cannot let the, you know, this kind of stuff drive things. And if you go back to what we were talking about regarding Games Workshop and changing the rules and, you know, making these things all powerful and whatnot, I mean, you're ruin, you know, they they are ruining the hobby. Now, I watched a couple videos on, uh, what do you call it, um, like the the last uh, financials report and stuff like that. And yeah, I mean, I can agree with some of the points, some of them I don't, but what I do see as a common trend is a loss of money. Now, does this, you know, there are plenty of people that are celebrating, and they are, the decline of Games Workshop. Axes to grind, you know, over what they've done to smaller companies, you know, with litigation and stuff, which is what I'm a little bit worried about when it comes to the Ravage Stars series with Mini Wargaming. Um, and I'm hoping that uh, that's not going to be the case. But it's, um, you know, I mean, we, we don't know. So uh, it's just, you know, I mean, anybody can make a claim for anything. The shareholders of any company don't really care about, um, you know, they don't really care about anything but their shares and the money. And so they don't care about, you know, us nerds out here that are playing the game and buying the, the, the models. You know, they, they don't care about any of that. Uh, as long as it's making them money. They don't care about what we have to say. And you can complain about that. You can say, you know, you know, this is, you know, completely, they wouldn't exist without us and blah, blah, blah. Well, you might be right, but the game system probably wouldn't exist without them. In a lot of in a lot of ways. Now things are changing these days. Like I said, we got one page rules. We got um, you know this Ravage Star thing coming out. You got a ton of talented 3D printing artists out there. You know that are putting out. I mean, amazing models compared to what GW is putting out. But what they you know and then in a lot of ways what they're doing is they're putting the onus on you. And, I, and I'm not saying this in a negative way, 3D artists. So don't don't take it this way. But they're, you know, because they don't have the space, you know, to, to house all this stuff, they're not, you know, they're not going to spend the money, I don't blame them, for packaging and everything else. And with the advent of technology and the internet and everything else, I don't blame them for just putting the STLs out there, you know, so that you can um, download and print the stuff yourself if you want it, if you have a 3D printer. Or if you don't have a 3D printer, if you know somebody who does, get the file, send it over to them. Pay them a little money for their efforts and their materials, and there you go. And then proxy that stuff. But that's where I get, you know, upset is, you know, here we are. You got, I mean, nothing but lies. I mean, I, you know, this is might seem a little off subject, but and I think I might have talked about this before. When Destiny 1, for instance, came out, uh, if you guys know that game, I was heavily invested in that game. It was like, it was everything I thought, you know, it was going to be. Um, at least in the beginning <clears throat> and um, super excited you know the, the, the selling point they have was that your character could go on you know it was gonna be a 10-year project your, your character could go on you know the whole time and I was someone that never was they had the opportunity to say get into WoW or any of that kind of stuff 
and um, you know I was just too late to the game and by the time you get in there nobody wants to play with you because you're a noob and you know they, they're they're used to running high level stuff they're used to their you know their raid teams whatever well that wasn't the case in destiny because I got in on the ground zero and then I met a bunch of guys that were just like me that were all about helping you guys <clears throat> and um, worked out <clears throat> excuse me worked out really well um, until <laughs> Destiny 2, and then all of a sudden, oh, um, the tower was destroyed and you lost all your stuff. So everything that you worked for is gone. And that's, you know, that's kind of what I see going on here, you know, uh, in our hobby, in our hobby with a lot of things, you know, the cracking down on the whole, look, if you're going to go to a games workshop tournament, which by the way, they're not hosting these things, you know, they're... They're being a part of it, but the, you know, Nova, the uh, LVO, Las Vegas Open, all that stuff, those are independent tournaments, okay? They're, they're not, you know, it's not like back in the day where, you know, where Games Workshop had their own tournaments, and, you know, they're not even hosting these things, but they want to sit there and say, now, I, I get it, they're, they're probably, you know, providing some things, you know, whether it's awards or, you know, whatever, but, I mean, they're not, you know, Golden Demon, all that kind of stuff. But they're not, you know, hosting this whole damn thing. You know, they're not, they don't have any real, real skin in the game, in my opinion. Um, and some of you probably know more of the inner workings of that than I do. And you'd be like, dude, you don't know what you're talking about. You know what? You're right. I don't. I have not been to them. But what I do know is that they're independent. And independent tells me that they're doing all the work and Games Workshop is riding the coattails. So... What does that what does this have to do with what I'm talking about? So I think you should be able to use, you know, you know, if if you know need be proxy models or whatever. As long as it's, you know, your your opponent can look at the model on the table without having to ask you and say, you know, okay, I know what that is and, and, and I know how to, you know, how to play against it. If they have to ask you constantly. And this is, this is, you know, some of you guys are probably laughing right now. You're probably like, dude, we have to do this with GW models. You're right, we do. We absolutely do. But, I mean, there's a way, you know, I mean, Lazcan looks like a Lazcan, you know, things like that. And there's plenty of stuff out there that has the same, you know, a relative, relative same look. And I think that that stuff should be allowed. Um, but it is what it is. Um... Anyway, Games Workshop is doing something there to the point that they're losing money. I I know that the you know the economies around the world are not that great right now. Um, I know people are holding on to everything they can. You know, you know, uh, mainly for preparing for medical stuff and whatever. I don't want to get into that, but uh, it's. I don't know. I don't. I don't want to sound like you know. Oh, the hobby's going away because it's not going away. But I wish that Games Workshop, and I know this is a huge wish, would listen to the community more. I wish that um, it wasn't just about the bottom line. I mean, one of the things that got me into this hobby was just you know how super friendly the company was as a whole. I mean. Like I've said this before, you know, when I got into Imperial Guard, it was back when they were doing the army deals. The army deals were massive. They were massive and, and didn't, it's, I know, sorry, Blood Raven, it's not, um, have to, uh, change the thing. Um, I don't know why it's. not that way anymore and it's unfortunate so anyway but thank you for chiming in there blood raven i just i wish the there was a way for me to know you know off the bat that i got a freaking 
chat without having to look up sometimes. Um, yeah, it's, um, you know what, while we're doing that, let's see if I can just switch that out on Twitch. I'm not the greatest when it comes to, to Twitch, but we'll, we'll do our best here. Cause I was doing that. I was doing Dawn of War on Twitch only. Let's see here. All right. Moderation. beg your forgiveness for my noob nature and when it comes to when it comes to Twitch. I wonder why oh I didn't even put that up. What the heck man? Hmm. So why oh maybe it puts it up because I have period put in there. I don't know. Let me see here. Creator dashboard might be it. Where are you, man? This is crazy. I guess you really gotta be like super good at, at this to understand what they want you know because I mean it's the in my opinion the the menu is not very user friendly let's see but yeah I'm basically streaming to twitch from YouTube so Where is, I don't see where the, th the thumbnail is, it's crazy. And I know I didn't put that Dawn of War thing up there. Not that one anyway. All right, well maybe, maybe we just can't do it. I don't know, maybe we can't change it. Or maybe I can't change it while I'm live. I don't know. Hold on. I might have found something. Uh, edit stream info, maybe. I do not see anything here. Nope. I mean, at least, you know, it's got it on there that I assemble miniatures in you know, paint them and stuff, and as well as playing. Um, I'm trying to figure out why I can't change the... There should be a way to do this. Yeah, because I didn't put all this stuff up there about the game of Dawn of War. They did that. What? It is what it is. Well, we'll have to work on it later. Appreciate your patience on it, though. All right. Anyway. Um, so, I'm going to stop with that nonsense right now. Let's get back to where I apparently had everything muted. So, we're, what we're working on right now is literally the last two. This one, i got to do one more cast here and one more cast Um uh, afterwards and I will have all of the track guards cast for all of the vehicles that are left that need them which is six hellhound devil dogs we you know we have three that are assembled we have three more to assemble and then the Bane blade 
and then whether or not I decide to put the Imperial Knight together, we already have one put together, I'm not sure, but I was thinking in my mind that I would have two Imperial Knights that would flank the Warhound Titan and or the um, uh, Warlord Titan that I have from the Titan Manufactorum that I bought back in 2014. Two of them actually. One of them was supposed to be like chaos, you know, I was going to convert it into chaos and stuff. Um, and I probably still will. But uh, that's what I was talking about here. So we're, we're making heavy progress. And I'm streaming right now during the day because my family's gone for a couple of weeks uh, to another state. So I'm running the businesses and, um, you know, able to do things without little kids running around screaming and hollering and things like that so but yeah we're we're finally about done with these track guards and stuff and uh pretty happy about that so, and again um main channel is on youtube just trying out twitch for now really um And streaming from YouTube to Twitch. Do whatever you want to call it simultaneously. Try that out. So far, we're seeing you working. I just gotta. I've been gone from this for so long. I gotta get back into the routine of making sure certain things are squared away. I probably should just make a checklist and go off of that before I go live. That would make sense. <laughs> Right, Matt. Two more. Yeah, I mean it's worked out pretty well. Um, there'll be twenty, twenty-one vehicles in this army, this Krieg army. So, plastic here and like you know like I've said before my other YouTube streams I don't have to do this but the look that I want for my Krieg death core this is the look I want and I'm not going to sit there and spend a ton of, well, a ton of money, a lot more money than I already have when I, you know, to buy just these bits because you can't buy them from GW or Games Workshop. Um, when I can just sit here and make them and improve my molding and casting skills at the same time. So, what does this mean for everything else? I am going to. And you can hate me if you want. Doesn't matter. It's not like I'm going to use them in tournament play. I'm going to, based off of what we were able to do here with this model, these models right here, and do this, <laughs> I'm going to grow my Chaos Army. And that's all I'm going to say about that. Um, I actually feel like I have a plan now that's going to work for instead of those were you know those are all metal models so they had to be you know done as they are um, and I did not take them off of the um, the bases I actually used the I actually used the bases at the as the poor uh, spout which worked out really well um, but where I'm going with this is I think I have figured out how because if you look at the models okay and again just just for 
disclosure here, I'm not reselling these things. This is just for me, you know, my own personal enjoyment, you know, armies that don't exist anymore, you know, models you can't get anymore. Um, anyway, I am going to clean the area up here a little bit. <clears throat> I'm going to take the whole sprue or a sprue. I'm going to show you guys what I'm talking about here. If you take a look at any sprue, right? Okay. If you take a look at any of these sprues and you notice you've got a, a wide open channel here. All this is for air, by the way. And then you've got these little tiny points that actually connect to the model. See right there? It's real tiny. Now, I don't have injection molding equipment, which is basically, you know, what's happening here. It's all being forced in there and whatnot. What I'm going to do is, or I'm going to experiment here, is I'm going to take the whole thing, make the mold as it is, and then I'm going to go back in and widen those channels just like I did for my other stuff. And I'm betting you that, yeah, it'll take a little bit of time, but I'm betting you that's going to be the key to reproducing this. So. best one but it's still solid there so we can still use those and that's all we're looking for is these two and those and I'll use the antenna if we're able to get it out just fine let me grab this uh, thing here trim some off the bottom but essentially what we're looking at we may have to trim off the side too because of this uh, this housing unit here. Yeah, we're gonna have to trim some off there. That's what's kicking it out. But just to give you guys an idea of what's happening here for these hellhounds. All right, that's not gonna stay. Uh, let me grab a camera here real quick and show you. For those of you that are new. <clears throat> Yeah, that little Creed guy in the turret, uh, I'm, I cast him as well. Along with 40 Death Riders. <laughs> Alright, so um, I am going to be right back because I'm going to let my dogs out. So I will let you guys know. And chat on Twitch. And on YouTube. See you in just a second.
back. Sorry, had the uh, mail truck came as well. This might be my extra lights and stuff for the desk. start painting and stuff we'll have the right light that we need based off of what I got going on with my current camera situation okay so let's go ahead and start putting this together like I said we've got to cut that one part off because of the but you're not even going to notice that crap side so we'll save that one for a different side yep that'll work so anytime I have an imperfection I look and try to see what side it will work the best on like I said we have to get rid of that, that part and then I'm going to go ahead and cut this off as well. All the way up. Just so it matches, you know what I mean? A little bit further. what we were looking for okay now we probably will have to cut these down some more it just seems to be the trend that I'm working with right now on the sides they stick up a little too high that's no big deal just clip this off don't get don't get overzealous and try to do the whole thing at once because it'll end up cracking everything just like if you're doing you know getting your stuff off the screw oh yeah there we go that looks good the other glass mold here in a second I want to go ahead and get this put together I'm really excited about finally being done I mean I my steel legion tanks for instance well the majority of them sat in a box for well over 10 years I'm sorry probably 15 wait a minute I bought them no <laughs> Two years, 20 years, I mean, because I got I got that Steel Legion army set that I wanted, and then I turned around and made some deals where I traded um, stuff I didn't need for more tanks, and yeah, so they're probably 20 years sitting in a box. Now they're all put together, 
waiting for battle. Just need to be painted. And that's, you know, we'll get there. But I want to make sure I've got everything put together. And for those of you new to the channel, don't know what I'm talking about, um, go to my YouTube channel if you're on Twitch. Uh, look at the first video, and that will tell you everything that you need to know about what's happening here. Thousands of models that I'm putting together. I've been in this hobby since 1998, and due to my career and various other aspects, I was just never able to really get anything put together, but I continued to collect in the hopes that one day I would be able to, and here we are. And yes, contrary to popular belief, I am married, have children, my wife supports my hobby, and so, you know, those women are out there. All right, awesome. Right, let's get this guy going here. Trim this up just a hair. What's a hair? Like pull a hair out? No, I'm kidding. That's an old man joke. Go ahead, I can hear you guys now. Boomer. I gotta tell you, that's gotta be, in my opinion, one of the lamest uh, put downs ever. Now, I'm not even a boomer. That's the crazy part. But each to their own, I guess. Each to their own. Like I said, don't do the whole thing here. I wouldn't even do it on a, you know, the, the Games Workshop plastic. You'd end up tearing it. Something's holding us up here. Let me see if we can figure it out. Oh, it's because we weren't far enough forward. It's okay. do these I always I always uh, turn the tank around as a front to make sure that the front track guard is not turned at an angle because you can line it up here and then you'll get back down here and like it's canted that way at the bottom so you'll want to fix that otherwise it just looks like it's hanging off and I'm not saying that that's not a thing. I mean, I've seen it on, you know, in real life on stuff. But it's, I don't like it. I'll just put it that way. And then if 
if you ever get your fingers stuck like I did, <laughs> speak of the devil, and you get that, you know, fingerprint stuff going on there on your, your plastic, you can scrape it off without biting into your plastic. It's totally doable. tank is trying to back up for me as I'm trying to apply pressure here. There we go. Two more to go. Or I'll, I'm sorry. Uh, five more to go because we have three that we need to put together. But anyway. Alright. Well, what we're going to do is we're going to pull this out. Yeah, for the next couple weeks, I should be able to at least do these streams during the day instead of 11, 12 at night. But we'll see. I got, you know, schoolwork to do too, of course.
all this that you see in this cup for those of you that are new to the channel that's the residual plastic that was left over so this cup is basically full of plastic Some good air bubbles coming up. That's good. It means that the plastic's getting down in there. It's good to go. Oh, we got a little bit of leakage here. Yep, looks good. Looks good. Okay. Let that sit. In the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and close this stream so I can work on the Twitter thing, see what happened there. So, Blood Raven, thanks a lot for that. And uh, we'll see you guys next time.